What do you think of the protests going on in Birmingham against uh, inclusive education at primary schools? Well, you know, I, from being uh, from a South Asian background, I can understand the fear and the religiousness behind it. So I, I think at the end of the day, we've got to express this with love and only cope this with love and nothing but hate or force. Because at the end of the day, if you can only show love, how can you fight against love? What we're having to do is break down assimilation of periods of history that's been embedded in our culture. And I think this, for example, is a step into that. Like, we've got to continuously chip through that gradually, but to just cement it with love. But every time we chip through the cement, we've got to cement it with love. And that's how we have to advocate. What do you think of the row that's going on in Birmingham to no outsiders against no outsiders? Uh, I think it's really sad because I don't think uh, LGBT plus education in schools is about an equality act or about a policy. I think it's about the safety and well-being of young people, not just some young people, but all young people. And when I'm not working in Parliament, I work in education and I'm an advocate for LGBT plus education and we do it because it's the right thing to do. We need to support Birmingham and we need to support the community out there because they're not being free and they deserve to live happy. they're very young. You're not telling them to be gay. You're just telling them it is okay to be gay if you are. I support the minister who supports that education. I really do. Oh, fuck them. Oh, do you know what? Fuck I think them. I've heard that. I've heard that. I've heard that. Fuck them. You literally have seen it. You're going to do this. Uh, we're all, we all agree that it needs to be taught in schools and it's a norm and love is love. So we're all teachers. Well, oh, you're all teachers. Very well said. I'm a teacher. Are you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's just it does, yeah. Oh, and, uh, it makes me sad. Yeah. What's happening? Well, as a secondary school teacher, we have so many LGBTQIA plus um, students um, of all ethnicities, yeah. and they absolutely <laughs> need it when they're younger for inclusivity and visibility, and to know that it's okay. And to tackle homophobia, yes. biphobia, yeah. transphobia. Um, and also, I think it gives us an equal ground yeah. where the argument is that a child must be at a certain age to learn about LGBTQ related um, topics. My argument is if you are being taught religion from practically birth. Indoctrinated. Yeah, so, well, yeah and, yeah, and you know, so it's a level ground and you know, you're being educated and once the child is older, they are able to make their informed decisions and it's just a way of reducing, you know, minimizing segregation and, and reducing ignorance and a lot of fear is based upon ignorance. So, you know, the people who are protesting, I'd encourage them to educate themselves. Yeah, well. good idea. Love and live and let live. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Homophobia was also brought into a lot of ancient civilizations through to um, just religion. Because if you look at previousness to this, you've got the Roman Empire, the Byzantine Empire, uh, the South Americans, even India where you have the Hydro tribe. I think sexuality and gender has been something that's been very open, but gradually through religion and politics has kind of created our own kind of rules, but we've got to kind of reassess that and break that down in our own way. In South America, for example, to be a shaman, you have to be you have to be third gendered. You have to have you have to assimilate both masculine and fem femininity to attain a certain level of consciousness, which has also been in different parts of the globe. You know, you had the Roman Empire where different people in politics had their companions. 